Hello, once again, this is Robert Reed with Unfolding Truth. I want to tackle a subject today, and it is about what is a true Christian? What does it take? Because a lot of times we will go to church and we'll say a sinner's prayer and maybe later on get baptized, and we think pretty much that's all it is. You know, hey, we're saved, and all we do is go to church each week and listen to a sermon, pay our tithe, and we are done. But that's not all there, there is to it. We have to count the cost. In fact, Jesus told a bit of a parable, as he usually does, on what exactly that means. Now, leaving all to follow Jesus Christ. Now, great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which you intended, for which of you intended to build a tower does not sit down first to count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, "This man began to build and was not able to finish." Or what king going to war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he was able with his 10,000 to meet him who's come against him with 20,000. And then he goes on to say that the guy will negotiate some sort of peace. Likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. And what he's saying is not so much to actually hate your family. It means what are you willing to give up? Are you counting the cost? Okay. This is in Luke 14, 25 to 33, uh, when you get a chance to read it on your own. But he's saying, are you able to um, continue in the faith, even if the people around you, including your family, are not in the faith? Let us continue. The other thing about being a Christian is that the world will hate you. That is a big, big thing that most pastors are not telling you. Everyone think it's just kumbaya and, and everyone's going to get along. Not going to happen. Let's go with the scripture. The world will hate you. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hated me hated my father also. If I had not come among them to do the works none, no other man did, they had had sin. But now have they been seen and hated me both and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be Fulfilled that is written in the law. They hated me without cause. You see, they hated God. When they hate you, it's because you are living a sanctified, separate, and holy life. You are living according to Scripture, and people get very uncomfortable with that. I need you to consider that. Also, you are not of this world. Be not of this world. Let's continue with the read. And be not conformed to this world, but, we, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's Romans 12, 2. Continuing. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Jeremiah 10, 2. Now, therefore, make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers, and do, do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. Now, what he means by that spiritually is that the idolatry and the spiritual fornication, we have to separate ourselves from that. And you have to ask yourself, are you willing to separate yourself from the traditions of man, from idolatry? Are you able to lay aside those things that you've been doing all your life to go God's way, according to the scripture? You have to be set apart, which is one of our uh, taglines, which is John seventeen seventeen. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Continuing, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Galatians 1, 4. 
And he renew in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Ephesians 4, 23 to 24. See, we, we have to be set apart. We cannot be like everyone else around us. That's what it means. That's why I want you to consider the cost. You have to understand that you'll be persecuted for righteousness sake. Let's continue in the read. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You see, when persecution comes against you, you are not the first person that's come along to walk God's way and people will persecute, hurt you. Because see, people don't like righteousness. Because Jesus told us to be a light unto the world, but man hates light. They love the darkness. So when you shed a light into your life and you shed the light on someone else, and I don't mean going around and um, striving with people and persecuting people of that nature. What I'm saying is that you will live in a holy and just life and trying to live God's way. They hate that and you will be persecuted. Now our minds, we need to be kingdom minded. That's another thing that a true Christian is all about. Their focus is solely on the kingdom, primarily. Now, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your Father, your Heavenly Father, knows that you need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these shall be added unto you. It would also require faith, you to live by faith and obedience. We all have to live by faith and obedience. Now, what does that mean? Basically, it means law and grace. Let's read. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Habakkuk 2, 4. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith, as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Matthew 17 and 20. For therein, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. You see, we just saw that in Habakkuk 2, 4. Romans 1 and 17 is Quoting Habakkuk 2 4. So, yeah, there was faith even in the Old Testament. So, it is about the faith, and you have to live by faith. But also, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Exodus 20. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of God. You see, David right here in the psalm is saying, Look, I don't care what you do. As a matter of fact, get from around me. I'm going to keep the commandments of God. Psalms 119 and 115. Okay. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. We will revisit that particular scripture later on. But see, you will have to set yourself apart. That's what, that's what the Bible is asking you and I. To set ourselves apart. To keep his commandment. To go God's way. And sometimes you just may have to walk alone. Not many pastors are telling us that. I know if I've been in church for a large number of years and I haven't heard exactly how this road to Christianity is going to go. Let's continue. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. James one twenty two. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? See, James is asking you, okay, yeah, that's one thing to have faith. That's good. But faith alone? And if you read James, you know he also said that faith without works is dead. So it is pretty much useless. We need both. You need faith and you need your works. Okay. You must manifest your love. What is the evidence of your love for God? Well, these scriptures will bear it out. And he said unto them, why callest me 
thou me good. There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. That's Matthew 19, 17. How about this? If ye love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. Let's continue on. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. You see, you have a lot of people in the church today saying, oh, don't worry about the commandments. We're under grace and that's all we need in grace and grace alone. Well, if you combine both Paul's writings and James' writings, brothers and sisters, it is both. You need faith. And you need to keep those commandments as the evidence of your faith and prove that you love God, plain and simple. You're going to also need baptism. Baptism is a part of your Christian walk. These are some of the things that makes up a true Christian. And no one's telling you this. A simple sinner's prayer and a, a sprinkling on the head and, and a little bit of baptism and just go on by your way. The journey is a lot more to that. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, Romans 6. And he came into all the country, the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remit, remittance of sin, Luke 3.3. 3. And finally, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, Ephesians 4.5. So, baptism is a part of the walk. It's a part of the makeup of a true Christian. These are, these are the fruits that we will know them by. Now, the day is drawing near, brothers and sisters, where there's going to be some perseverance and some persecution. And it's going to take strong faith. Let's read. In your patience possess ye your souls. Luke 21, 19. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations worketh patience. Romans 5, 3. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer. Or whether we be com comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. You see, brothers and sisters... Paul is saying that it does not matter. If we're being comforted from, from, from God, that's okay. That helps us. That's good for our uh, consolation and, sal and salvation. Or if we are being afflicted. Because there will be a season of affliction and then there will be a season of comfort. But ultimately in this life, it's going to be ups and downs. But we're striving for a life where it's just going to be no more tears, pain, and just everlasting peace. That's what you are striving for if you're going to be a Christian. Let's continue. But in all things, approving ourselves as the, as the ministers of God in much patience, in affliction, in necessity, in distresses. 2 Corinthians 6, 4. Continuing. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. At 2 Thessalonians 1, 4. How about this? That ye be not slothful. But followers of them, followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. See, that's what we are striving for. That's what we're holding on to. Uh, Paul likened our journey as a race, a race of endurance. And we must run that race as if we're trying to actually win. We are trying to inherit the promise. That is our job. I don't know how many pastors are teaching you to be diligent in your Christian walk, but it is evident that we should. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. In Romans 2, 7. This is what we're striving for. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. Romans 5, 3-4. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12 and 1. Brethren, this is truly a race. This is an endurance race so that you don't fall away, so that you're not cast aside. 
you know, our society or uh, we're training lazy Christians. When the scripture says don't be slothful, don't take for granted Jesus' sacrifice. So am I saying, oh, well, you got to work your way into heaven. No, that's done by grace. But to stay on track and to prove your love, it is by the commandments, by works. The scriptures bear this out. Let's move on. Great tribulations, my brothers and sisters. Then, they sh then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Okay, I hope that sinks in. Let's move on. That's, that's in Matthew 24 and 9. Moving on. And have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arise it for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. See, those who are not actually rooted in the word. See, the, the question is, have you made your mind up that you're going to do this walk? Let's continue. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, upon thee, even in the latter days, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice. Okay, there, there's going to be a time of our testing. We will be tested. You will be tested. You have to ask yourself, are you going to be able to stand up to the test? Are you going to be able to hold fast to your faith? Hold fast to the promise that was given to you. This is not an easy walk because there's going to be a very troublesome time ahead of you in your walk. Who comforteth us in all of our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Because sometimes that's exactly where our comfort is going to have to come from. Tribulation and anguish. Upon every soul of a man that doeth evil. Of the Jew first and also the Gentile. In this world, brethren, there will be tribulation. Okay? Moving on. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. You see, the apostles preach that there's going to be some trouble. But we need to hold fast. That we need to stay on the straight gate. Now I know it's not popular among a lot of preachers today. In fact, many preachers want you to have your best life now. Or to be a better you. Or to pursue uh, money. But God in Christ, he, he, he never promised an easy, easy road. Sometimes there, things will be easy and joyous and happy. But you have to remember we are in an un an imperfect world, excuse me. We are in an imperfect world. So there will, be, there will be some strife. There will be some tribulation. In fact, the scripture says that there will be. Okay? So it is far more expedient for me to tell you to be prepared for those times. You don't need training in happiness. You need training in tribulation. Continuing on. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We need to say amen to that. Thank God that he has overcome the world. He that, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Thank you, God. That's Revelation 2, 7. Continuing on. But he that shall endure... Unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, I know you've never heard that. And some people may come from a background of once saved, always saved. But it's another lesson. But I can tell you this. There's plenty of scriptures that bears out that there's an apostasy, that there's a falling away, that you can be cast off and cut off. Okay? So this is a not, not about fear. This is about training, preparing you. To understand when you're wondering why all these bad things are happening. I'm telling you now. Now, we need to finish the race. This is what it's about. We need to finish the race. Here, in the pa here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14 and 12. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth 
with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and faith of the saints. Revelations 13 and 10. And finally, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Revelations 3 and 10. You see, brethren, the word of God is telling us that there will be tribulation. There will be trouble. And the reason you need to be prepared is because if you're not prepared and tribulations come, surely you will fall away. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which they say are apostles and are not and has found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. This is Jesus talking about those who endure, who, have, who are holding fast. Okay. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. He's saying to hold fast. He's saying to endure. That's what it means. If you are going to call yourself a Christian, then you need to understand what that means. Now let's hear the conclusion of this. And fear not them who can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10, 28. Continuing, but I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after the killing of the body, has power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. That's Luke 12 and 5. And finally, the scripture that I told you we will revisit. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That is our duty, brothers and sisters. So understand, the Christian walk is not an easy walk. But it is well worth it. Have faith. Hold fast. Keep his commandments. Fear God. And follow his word. Well, this is Robert Reed with Unfolding Truth. And I pray that your peace and understanding has increased. In Jesus' precious name. Until next time.